Hi guys, this is Sadek from droidman.com and in this video, we'll show you how to root the extended XT ROM using Magisk. The steps are applicable across all the versions of ROM and also applicable across all the Android phones. As for reference, I'm using a OnePlus 70, which is running the latest extended XT ROM based on Android 13 as you could see, but you could carry out the steps across all the versions and all the Android devices. So on that note, please take a backup of all the data on your phone and let's get started with the step. First and foremost, let me show you the status of my phone. As of now, my phone is not rooted. As you could see here, I'm checking via the root checker app. You could install it from Play Store. So currently my phone is not rooted and we will now root our phone and then recheck the status at the end. So let's get started. First and foremost, we'll have to download the Android SDK platform tools folder. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB commands. So download it from the link given in the description and extract it anywhere on your PC. In my case, I've done the extraction in eDrive. You could extract it anywhere you want. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging. This is required to execute ADB commands. So go to the settings menu on your phone and from settings menu, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. This will enable developer option. Now go to system and you should see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. Once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. So in order to do that, you will have to open the CMD window inside the platform tools folder. So go to the platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. As you could see, we have now launched a command prompt inside the platform tools directory. Now just type in ADB devices and make sure you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any serial ID, then disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging or unplug and replug your phone from your PC, use the official USB cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So try out this USB tweaks and make sure you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting the serial ID, you are good to go ahead. So next up, you will now have to download the Magisk APK file. So I've given the link in the description. Go to this guide and go to the table of contents and from there, get hold of the latest APK file. At the time of recording, it's the version 25.2. So jump over to this version and download the latest version APK file. Likewise, you could also verify the change log from the GitHub. I've given the link of that as well. So you could go there and verify the changes and then grab hold of the APK file from this link. Once that is done, you would have to place this APK file inside the platform tools folder, as you could see. And you would also have to place one copy of this file on your phone. So in case your phone is not visible on your PC, you simply need to go to developer option, search for default USB, and then from the default USB config dialog box, select file transfer. Your phone will now be visible on your PC and make sure to transfer one copy of the magic file on your phone as well. So currently we are having two copies of this file. One is in the platform tools folder and the second one is on our device. So once that is done, we'll now have to rename the magic file in the platform tools folder and we'll have to convert it to zip file so that we could flash it via recovery. So right click on it and select rename, then change the APK format to zip. You will now get a prompt on your PC, click on yes. And with this, we have renamed the magic file and made the, the conversion from APK to zip. So with this, the file is now in a zip format and we could flash it via the recovery format. On the other hand, you will have to keep the magic file on your phone in the APK format itself. It's just a file in the platform tools that it should be changed to zip format. Once that is done, let's now boot our phone to the recovery mode. To do so, you just need to open the CMD window inside platform tools folder and type in ADB reboot recovery and our phone will now go to the extended XT recovery. While that is happening, let's now shorten the name of the magic file so that it becomes easier to type in the command window. So simply rename it to magic. So, so let's remove the version number from the end. So that is now done and our phone has now booted to the extended XT recovery. So now go to apply update and select apply from ADB. With this, your phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. So you could now sideload the magic file for that, open the CMD window inside the platform tools folder and just type in the command correspondingly adb site load and name of the file in our case, the name of the file is magis.zip. So do so and tap enter and let me show you once again, it's the magis zip file in our case. So the site loading has now begun and you will now get a prompt regarding the signature verification failed. We are getting this error message because this, the file we are now site loading, which is the magis file does not is not a part of the extended xc rom so if you flash or sideload any file which does not belong to this rom you will get this warning 
you will get this warning if you flash any other custom recovery or even if you sideload the GF package as well, then also you will get this message. It's not a cause of concern and simply tap on yes. So the magic will now begin sideloading onto our phone and it will automatically patch the file in the backend and the process will take up to a minute at the very max. And as I, I have told you before, the error message was nothing to worry about. It's just that the magic is not a part of this developer of this ROM and so we are getting that error message and there's nothing to worry about so the side loading has now begun and you could keep a track of the same on your device on your pc it might get stuck at 33 percent it's not a cause of concern you could keep a track of every st steps on your phone itself and the process will only take a few seconds at the very max so it has now it is now flashing the new boot image as you could see on the bottom left of my screen and the flashing should be completed in a matter of few seconds so let's wait for the time frame and while the file is being flashed, let me tell you one more thing. While side loading any file, you might get a message, something along the lines of let me show you once what I'm talking about. While side loading any file, you will get you could get any of these five messages. And all these five messages signify the same thing, which means that the flashing is completed successfully. Mostly you will get this message, but in some cases you might also get any of these four messages as well. And it's nothing to worry about. All this signifies that the flashing is completed. So let's now let me now show you. The status so on my device is showing done likewise in the cmd window you could see we are getting the total transfer message so with this the side load is now complete and we could now boot our phone to the os so let me now do so so for that go to the home screen of the recovery file and then select reboot system now your phone will now boot to the os and as of now magis has patched and flashed the boot image but it has done so in the back end in the front end the magis app will still not be installed so we will now have to install the Magis APK file. As of now, your phone will be rooted, but there will be no UI or the front-end GUI file to interact with. So we will now have to flash the Magis APK, APK file as well so that we could grant the root action to the third-party apps. So let me show you what I mean. So our phone is now booted to the OS. And as you could see, currently, the Magis app has now been installed on our phone. So what we need to do is simply go to the File Manager app and just select the Magis file that we have transferred earlier. So select it and tap on continue and hit install. It will now install the Magis app and so tap on open and it will now launch the app and ask you to carry out a few additional tweaks. So in this dialog box that appears, just tap on OK. So your phone will again reboot and Magis will reboot your phone to the OS and it will take around 30 to 40 seconds at the very max. So let's wait for the time frame and it will now flash the rest of the dependency in the back end and will then also give you the apk file in the front end to interact with the app so as of now as you could see we have flashed the magic file and it's now booting our phone to the os this first boot will take up a few additional seconds that's nothing to worry about from the subsequent boot up you will not it will not take such a long time so let's simply wait for the time frame and only i guess so it's now booted it was really fast so Let's now unlock our phone and as you could see, we should now have got the Magisk app. So here's the Magisk app, let me bring to the home screen. And if you now launch the Magisk app, you could see that our phone is now rooted and it's the latest version 25.2 which is installed. Likewise, let's now verify the same from the root checker app. So just launch it and type on verify root and you will now get a Magisk prompt. So tap on grant and as you could see, our phone is now rooted. So guys, on that note, we round out this video on how you could root the extended XC ROM. As told before, it's applicable across all the ROM version and, and across all the Android devices. With that said, if you still have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And guys, please subscribe to this channel and like this video for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.